this demonstration should come at the point in your curriculum where you've got the students understanding a bit about the kinetic molecular theory, about atomic weights, Graham's law of confusion, I think it is, or maybe it's diffusion, I forget, it's one of those. Anyway, my students are often confused about what is going on there, and this demonstration, I think, is one of the more graphic ones that shows and helps the students understand what diffusion is really all about and the kinetic molecular uh, theory. There's a lot of equipment that we're using with this that the students may or may not be familiar with. First of all, we're going to be using some hydrogen gas. And I have a cylinder, a tank of hydrogen gas. You may not have that. It may be something you want to generate. You can use other gases in this experiment other than hydrogen gas, but hydrogen will give you the most dramatic results. Uh, so we're going to be using that one uh, this time. Some other equipment that we have here is a beaker, a tall form. I have a liter beaker here. It's attached and going over this apparatus. Now this piece of equipment is also going to be new to the students and may be new to you. It's a porous cup. It's, it's, a, uh, it's like a flower pot, but hasn't been um, glazed. It has tiny channels uh, through it. If I were to put water in here, soon the cup would become wet on the outside. Now you may be familiar with the kind of a device like this, it's much larger, that they might put a bottle of uh, white wine in that has been, uh, sits in here and the water as it evaporates out of here keeps the bottle cool. But it's, the essential thing is it's a container and it has channels that go through it, small channels, not big openings, but small ones, very tiny. You may find this mixed in with your uh, electrical chemistry, electrochemistry uh, materials, because it's often used uh, in creating a battery. Uh, it puts solutions in here, it acts as a barrier. We we'll also have a one hold rubber stopper that fits the porous cup, and through the stopper, the glass tube. Glass tubing through the stopper. And then the glass tubing is through a piece of cardboard. And the glass tubing is attached to a rubber hose. The cardboard supports the beaker. The rubber tubing at the other end has a piece of tubing, glass tubing, through a stopper, which is one whole stopper, and fits into this U-tube. Now the U-tube is flexible, and you want to make sure that you get this apparatus introduced to the students uh, prior to this demonstration so that they know what this equipment is all about. And we have a liquid. I've just made it green here, green water, so that we can see it perhaps more easily. And the levels are the same, indicating that the pressure on the two arms, atmospheric pressure, is the same on both arms. And so the level of the liquid is equal. The tube then is connected to the inside of the porous cup. So that the pressure inside the porous cup is being measured by this manometer. The levels are the same. The pressure inside the cup is the same as the air pressure. Inside the cup pressure is being measured by this open arm manometer. We're going to be putting hydrogen gas into a beaker that will securely fit in here without being knocked off. We want to make sure that it doesn't fall off during the demonstration. All right, that's the equipment. Let's get into the actual explanation and the demonstration itself. Now, we know that gases are in constant random motion. And as they're bouncing around, what gas do we have in the air? Well, the students will eventually figure out that most of the air is nitrogen gas. And so I may use the term nitrogen or I may use the term air, but it's all the same thing. We're going to be concentrating the idea that there is mostly nitrogen gas in the air. So what's happening is that there's nitrogen molecules all through the air and they are bouncing around. 
And as they bounce around, they hit this cup. And as they hit that cup, some of them go in. On the inside of the cup, there's also air. On the inside of the cup, we filled it completely full of air. And the air molecules, nitrogen molecules, are bouncing around on the inside. They're all at the same temperature, so the speed of the two molecules inside the cup and those outside the cup are the same. So some are bouncing against the walls, bump a bump a bump. Some are bouncing against the walls from the other side, bump a bump a bump. They're going through at some particular rate, but it's the same rate, going in and coming out at the same rate, bump a bump a bump, bump a bump a bump. No net change. The pressure inside the cup and outside the cup are the same. That's an important piece of understanding that has to be in place. Again, we're measuring the pressure inside the cup with this manometer. What happens, though, if we put some other gas around that cup? The other gas that we're using is hydrogen gas. Now, I need some assistance here in order to fill this with hydrogen. Now, I want you to hold the beaker, and I'm going to fill it full of hydrogen gas. And at some point, the students will recognize, well, that's not the way to do it. Because hydrogen gas is lighter than air. Hydrogen, being lighter than air, is going to go upward. So how do you think you should hold that beaker? Exactly right. So if you'll hold that in here, I'll turn on the gas. All right, let's fill this full of hydrogen gas. This is hydrogen, right? Yeah, that's an important thing. I want to go slowly so that it doesn't create eddies and come out too much. I do want it to be full. Now be careful not to spill it. definite change, but look how rapidly it comes back down. This arm got pushed down. This arm went up. But now they're essentially equal again. What's happened in here? Let's discuss that. What's inside the beaker is hydrogen gas bouncing around. Boom, 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 boom. Because hydrogen is lighter, it travels faster. What's inside the cup is nitrogen. Bump, 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 bump. So we have bump, 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 and bump, bump, bump. Well, the bump, bump, bump of the hydrogen goes into the cup faster than the nitrogen, bump, 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 comes out of the cup. So there's a net inflow of gas into the cup, which increases the pressure inside the cup. The increase in the pressure inside the cup pushes this arm down, causing this arm to go up. But now they're equal again. How can we explain that? And bring out of the students with discussion what's going on here, but basically the idea is that now there is hydrogen inside the cup that wasn't there before. Now we have on the inside of the cup, with this set up now, we have hydrogen on the inside, bump, 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 and hydrogen on the outside, bump, bump, bump. Once again, we have an equilibrium going in and coming out at the same rate. And so the pressure inside the cup is again equal to atmospheric pressure. The beaker is open to the atmosphere, so the pressure inside here is atmospheric pressure. But the gas hydrogen inside and the hydrogen outside going into and out of the cup at the same rate. Now, if you've understood that, and the students can, can really grasp that, then they should not be surprised and be able to explain, and maybe even predict, what will happen when I take the cup away. A very quick change over here as well. If you watched it, did you see it? That the gas over here, when I took the cup away, the pressure was reduced. This arm went up and this arm went down. 
Why not have the students actually write out an essay at this point explaining what happened? But on the inside of the cup, remember, now we had hydrogen. Bump, 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 bump. But now on the outside is nitrogen. Bump, buddy, bump, buddy, bump. So the bump, 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 bump on the inside of the cup going out is greater than the bump, the bump going into the cup. So there was a net effluent, a net effusion out of the hydrogen gas, reducing the pressure inside the cup as was measured by a decrease in the pressure on this arm. Once again, the arms have become equal. Again, they're equal because now we have, again, the same bump a bump a bump on the inside with the bump a bump on the outside going into and out of the cup at the same rate. So it's back to atmospheric pressure. You can do this demonstration with other gases as well. It's not as clearly obvious. Heavier gases would have to be collected course with a beaker like this. Other light gases will cause the same result, as I've said, but not as, as visible to the students. It's a clear explanation, I think, clear observation of Graham's law of effusion. It's a way of making, I think, an abstract concept a little bit more concrete in a way that is dramatic and rememberable.